Hello, hello, hello. Now you think with this, I'd be launching a murder investigation into who killed my spindle, but I know exactly what caused it. And keep watching to find out. And let's lose this silly hat. That's much better. What I want to talk about in this video is how my spindle died and what I could have done to prevent it. And go through a routine startup procedure that I go through every day. And this will apply whether you use your machine daily, like we do, or if you're just a more occasional user. Now, a quick caveat on the spindle subject. Uh, I'm talking about the uh, CNC spindles, not the hand routers. The hand routers, though, to be fair, we're never designed for long runs as they get on a CNC machine. So obviously you can uh, need to take your own precautions in that regard. And for those of you who hate watching to the very end to get the information, the reason the spindle died was because I didn't follow the routine startup procedures and regular maintenance procedures. But if your machine was like mine and there was no startup manual, then this video is definitely going to help you. When you're starting these machines up, you've got to realize they're a bit like an athlete. You can't just turn them on and expect them to do a 100 meter sprint just like that. If they don't warm up, they're going to get damaged. So what we need to do is go through a procedure to make sure we get things going before you then start doing any jobs. And obviously, this procedure also adds to the longevity of the machine. Now mixing with this, I'm going to talk about both the spindle and the CNC itself, because they both fall into the same sort of uh, procedure in terms of getting them going, getting them warmed up. So let's start with how I come in, when, the first thing I do when I arrive every day. And the first thing that I do is turn on the mains power to the CNC machine and to the PC behind. And I'm giving those a couple of minutes just to get it, let the warmth get into the circuitry, in case there's any damp or anything like that, so I want to know if there's any problems at that point. Once I've been on for a, a couple of minutes, it might even be 30 seconds to a minute, I'll then start looking to go through my startup routine. But before we get into that, let me interrupt with one important message that I think you all need to know, because I see it happen an awful lot on YouTube videos, and you shouldn't be doing this. Now go on, be honest with me. Are you one of them? Are you? One of them. It uses that to tap on that when it's still on there. Hey, is that you? Is it? Stop it. The last thing you should be doing is something that. It's meant to be a precision instrument and any tap will try and knock it out of alignment anyway. So it's a bit silly. All you've got to do to clean these out is get yourself some toothy peg brushes. For a few of these. I have a dirty one, this is my really dirty one. And then I have a different levels of cleanliness thereafter. But literally, you just go around a couple of seconds, same in there. Job done, that's it, clean. No damage done. Don't be a spindle abuser. And guys, listen, if you found any of this information useful, please do remember to hit the like button and please share it around. Obviously, it does help the video, it helps more people there get the benefit of their machines. So let's talk about the routine that's described in the manual and I use on the machine when I come in the morning. Okay, so with a spindle, the important thing is it has to build up to full speed slowly over a period of time. Now there's two things to this. The first part is just going through a quick sequence. Of, you know, when I arrive, when I've got the machine warmed up, I start this out. So what I do while I'm putting around getting my computer set up over there, uh, getting any bits and pieces I need out for the day, working out what jobs I've got to do, I'll come over to the CNC and on the VFD, I turn on the spindle to its low setting. So I'll just whack it down. Uh, this goes down to about 7,000 RPM on a slow spin. Uh, and I will turn that on and I will have this turning in the background for about 10 minutes on that uh, slow speed. Sounds like a long time, but trust me, by the time you've done a few jobs, it isn't at all. Then gradually, throughout the next sort of uh, 15 to 20 minutes, I'll keep coming back and I'll slowly ramp up the speed and let it run for, you know, three, four, five minutes on each speed, so sort of next thing up we've about 12, then I maybe go up to 18 before I eventually hit the 24. Uh, 24,000 RPM is the maximum on this particular one. And I'll let it run like that for at least two or three minutes. And that routine I go through every day without fail. And that was one of the key elements that I wasn't doing that caused this spindle, or the previous spindle, to die. It's just a case of allowing the spindle to get warmed up, get moving and get the coolant circulating around it as well. Now, coupled with that, uh, obviously you can't really show you on here, but the other thing that I have programmed to the VFD, again, this is something not a lot of people do. Most people just have it go from zero to full speed as fast as they possibly can because they want to get in and get stuff cut. 
I actually have mine set to 12 seconds to go from zero to whatever the speed is that I'm cutting the job at, which is usually 18 to 24,000 most of the time. So it'll take 12 seconds to go from zero to that full speed. And that brings up the spindle gradually. It's not racing to get full pelt. Now, 12 seconds might be a bit extreme. You probably could get away with six, eight, something like that. But really, you should allow the, the spindle to come to speed much slower than just having it going full pelt. And similarly, when it slows down, I think mine's set to about 10 seconds. Again, when it, when it comes down to finish the job, mine carries on spinning slowly while it just comes to a rest. So I'm not putting any excess pressure on the spindle doing routine jobs, start and end of each uh, project. Now the next step, again, I, I may even be doing this while the spindle is warming up, which is another task that I do. So as the spindle's coming up to speed uh, from the initial startup, I also might stand here and do this. Many of you may run a roadrunner machine operation. That is just a, an operation that takes uh, the CNC across a, a path around the bed uh, just to get going in the morning. Um, I used to do that way. I don't now. I tend to just do it manually now, standing here with the remote and just moving them around manually. But what I'm doing while I'm doing that is I'm listening uh, to the machine. I'm listening for any rattles and bangs that shouldn't be there, that wasn't you know, clearly there the day before. Um, and I'm just keeping an eye on it as well. It, it, it's a good gauge for the grease, you know, if it needs a bit of oil, something like that. So but literally uh, to warm the stepper motors in the same uh, process that I've warmed up the spindle, I want to hear it moving, get it moving. So I will stand here for five minutes, just go backwards and forwards, and left to right and up and down on all the axes with the uh, hand wheel. And that also puts a bit of warmth into the stepper motors ready for the day's work. So I guess you could think of it as a, a more of a marathon than a sprint. You know, we're not trying to rush into getting jobs done. Uh, it's nice if you can do that. But for the longevity of the machines and the equipment, uh, it's better just to allow things to come up to, to temperature much slower before you start doing any projects for the day. And that essentially is the daily routine. And that's what we've learned to not kill the spindle. Unfortunately, I learned the hard way. I did think when I uh, when it initially broke, it was the VFD again. Um, I've already replaced the VFD from the original that came with the machine. When when the machine arrived, the mounting point for the VFD was low down uh, beneath the bed. Uh, because we're cutting aluminium, uh, a lot of chips uh, were flying around. Uh, some chips landed in the top in the in the fan vent and uh, sizzled the uh, circuit board. Uh, so that wasn't a good day. Um, so naturally when the spindle died I thought oh hell I've done it again because chips do still fly around occasionally uh, even though it's you know we try and protect it. Um, the VFD as you can see is mounted much higher now for that reason uh, but as it turned out it wasn't the VFD even though I bought a new one and you know went to the expense of finding out the hard way that that wasn't the issue. The issue was in fact uh, the spindle. Uh, I did dismantle it afterwards and I found a lot of gunk inside as well and it was basically just from it being sitting idle uh, for weeks on end and when we did come to use it we just whacked it up full speed cut something closed it down again and went off to, to do another job um, at the time we were having so much work we were having to laser cut everything so we were outsourcing laser cutting and so the machine just sat there while we were that busy um, so needless to say when the laser cutting was no longer needed i went back to use the machine more that's when it, when it all went wrong. So a uh, rather expensive day, but uh, you know that's how you learn, unfortunately. So hopefully what I'm saying, learn from our mistake, doesn't cost you as much. One last tip I will give you as well. If you're running one of these water cool spindles, uh, as well as your distilled water, get yourself some uh, auto coolant, you know, the kind of thing you put in your radiator of your car. Put, put that in, mix it in with the, uh, the distilled water. Um, obviously it acts as a great coolant, but it does help keep some of the algae down a little bit, you know, some of the gunk that builds up in the water, so it lasts a bit longer between changes. So uh, just a little bit of that, another quick tip for you. So that's it in today's video, guys. I hope it was useful to you. As always, if you did find it useful, please do give it a thumbs up, and obviously if you want to subscribe for future episodes. We'll see you again soon. Take care. Thank you for watching.